What is up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about the importance of torque plating. Isn't that right, Ronnie? That's true, sir. Yeah, we apologize for the delay in the videos. We've been super busy with the shop, as you guys can see. We're backed up with tons of builds, and we've been doing a lot of tuning, too, for the Evo 8s and 9s, so we're hoping to show you guys videos of those as well. Uh, once we get like a good routine down of you know how and where we're gonna perform them until we get our dyno in the house, but uh, yeah, so today, like Jeffrey mentioned, we're gonna be talking about torque plates. This is something that I've always talked about, even uh, you know, from the days of Josh's videos. Um, so, a torque plate, what it is essentially, is basically it's a block of aluminum plate that they machine to mimic a cylinder head being bolted onto a block. So in this case, as you guys can see, MAP, Modern Automotive Performance, makes this uh, certain torque plate, and it's for the 4G63, obviously. These boards are big enough for a 4G64 as well, so uh, I believe they're 88, 87 millimeters, so, uh, you know, for a 4G64 block, even, even with a uh, 20 over bar, basically. So 4G63, 4G64, you can use this torque plate. And we also have the 4B11 one here as well. So when we do our 4B11 engines, we can check it. So why do we use it? Um, when you bolt on a cylinder head, uh, the block has a tendency to distort. Uh, the cylinders in specific have a tendency to distort. And what that means is whenever your machinist, uh, you know, finishes uh, boring the block, and is uh, trying to basically final hone to the piston to wall clearance of your choice or the engine builder's choice. Um, when they're using the honing stone, they're not using a torque plate. What happens is uh, whenever they finish, uh, you know, that procedure, they can basically put in their dial bore gauge and, you know, it'll be pretty much perfect if that's what they're going after. But the catch is here. When you bolt a torque plate on there, it mimics the cylinder head being bolted onto the block. When the cylinder head is bolted onto the block, like I said, it distorts the bores and the cylinders. So if you are to bolt a, for, uh, a torque plate onto the block when you're doing the final honing process, uh, you know, you can get the bore nice and perfect and, you know, the, you know, the least amount of taper and out of round uh, possible. And then when you take it off, it's actually going to be a little distorted. So it's basically vice versa. But you want that because when you machine it with a torque plate on there and you bolt on your head, you're going to have a perfect cylinder or as perfect as your machinist uh, got it, pretty much. So today, uh, me and Jeffrey were talking about this and uh, obviously every engine that we blueprint, we you know put the torque plate on there, we double, triple check our machine shop's work. As you guys can see, we have a sheet of paper that we always, uh, you know, write down our measurements, our X, Y, and Z for basically our, you know, taper and out of round. Uh, we basically measure at three points in the cylinder, uh, about an inch, inch and a half down is the first place we measure, halfway in the cylinder, and then again, an inch or an inch and a half from the bottom we measure again. So three places, three different locations. Um, so I wanted to show you guys this because there's a lot of debate about this and uh, even though I've always argued and you know told people that you need to use a torque plate for the 4G63 motors because they distort and some people are like no we you know we have great success with them you know running these clearances uh, yada yada basically you have to run it super loose if you don't use a torque plate because it distorts the crap out of the block. And I'm about to show you guys that. So uh, you have to use the same head gasket and the same head studs or whatever fastening you know, material you're gonna use to hold the head on. So you're gonna have to use the same thing. So for this particular EVO 8 block, we're using an EVO 9 gasket because it's about 20,000 thicker than an EVO 8 gasket. Uh, so we're using that. Uh, we use this during the machining process and now we're using it to check the clearances and everything else because you know we want everything to be mimicked uh, to the time of the engine being machined and when obviously the head's gonna go on. Uh, this engine's using the regular ARP 2000 grade uh, head studs. You know this engine's not gonna be seeing any more than 35 pounds of boost, so uh, there was no need to upgrade to anything crazy. Uh, so you bolt this on you apply your molly loop on the arp stuff and you torque it to spec just like you would a cylinder head uh, so 
how you actually go on about measuring the cylinders for tape run out of round. This is actually the same procedure we use to measure the piston to wall clearance. So every piston manufacturer is going to give you a different gauge point. So the Y-Secos, it's about right here. So what the gauge point is, is literally where you put your gauge or micrometer in this case. And we basically lock it to this measurement. And then... We just wiggle it, we make sure it's not too tight. And basically, you just want the air gap to be out of there. And that's what we have achieved right here. So this is uh, the point that the manufacturer wants you to measure piston to wall from. So you gauge it over here. And now you have this micrometer set to the, essentially the thickest portion, uh, the widest portion of the uh, piston, if you will. So we use our handy dandy little micrometer vise which as you guys can recall from the previous videos i used to use the vise with uh, a piece of paper on there and this actually has two nice cushions so you don't distort the tool because it's a, it's a precision tool so you don't want it to distort so next thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna obviously a quality dial bore gauge we always use mitotoyo stuff um we're gonna be investing in some sun and stuff later on as well but uh, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to choose the correct size or the closest size to the piston or, or the bore possible. And what you're going to do is you're basically going to use two of your fingers to hold this portion of the dial bore gauge in here while you wiggle the other end of it to basically see where the dial stops. So where the dial stops is where the zero point is at. What that means is when I zero this out and... I can't get it to go past zero, like it stops at zero. It means it's it's basically zeroed out to this part. So it's the size of that piston. So let's do that together right now. So we're about two, two tenths of a thou off. There we go. And the more you do this, the easier it becomes to set. There we go. Perfect. I like to double check, triple check, quadruple check. Let's do it one more time. There we go. It's at zero. All right. So this is going to be our X point, Y point, and Z point. Uh, on this particular cylinder, our Y point is the you know the one that's crazy distorted. So I'm just going to show you guys real quick, and then we'll take the torque plate off, and we'll show you the rest. So the cylinder number one, again, inch and half down the bore. We're we're about. about four seven we go a little bit down we're at about four six and then we go all the way down and we're at four five so that's two tenths of a thousandths deviation which is completely normal um the y point four and a half dead on middle Four and a half again, dead on as you can you can see it stops at four and a half. Four and a half and half. <laughs> and then bottom four six. So four point six thou. Okay. So that was one thou deviation on the Y. And then we go to our Z. We got about Let's see, about four eight to four nine. We got about, again, four eight over there. Then we go down a little bit. We got about four five. So one more time, four eight. Four eight, four five. Okay, that's one cylinder. We can demonstrate another one here for you real quick. Four six. Four seven. Four four. So, you know, we get the machine shop uh, specific piston to wall clearance, obviously, and they go based off of that. It's never going to be 100%, you know, there's going to be some distortion, some deviation at 
all times it doesn't matter who's doing the machine work i mean it's very hard to get it to be you know perfectly you know perfect so this is a four and a half thou piston to wall motor as you guys can see again there is some deviation there but let's go to this one as well and look they're all fairly close let's see four six four five four five or Y four six four three and four three again. So three three times up at that deviation. So now now what we're gonna do is we're we're gonna take the torque plate off and show you guys why we use this in the first place. no torque plate so the time. torque plates off as Jeffrey mentioned so we're just gonna go over what we just did again and see the results so at the top we got about four eight in the middle we have about four three and down low we have about four two so before it was four seven four seven four five I think. So let's go to our Y. This is where it has the most distortion on this block. So we got four now. Hold on a second, let me get there. yeah. There we go. We got we got about four now up top. We got about four point eight, four point seven, four point eight in the middle. And down low, we got we got about four point five. So that's. Again, let's let's do it again. Actually, it's a little, it's it's a three nine or three eight up top, four seven four eight on the bottom, and then down low, just about four seven four seven again. I'm trying to get it at the same spot so you get the same reading. It's about four four seven four six. So that's a Tao of deviation. Just that's a complete Tao of devi deviation just by taking the torque plate off. Where we had two tenths of a Tao. Um, now we have a full Tao. So as you guys can see, this is why it affects ring sealing so much. This is why, you know, good machine work costs money because you know you need the tools to basically be able to. You, know, you need the torque plate. You need somebody that knows what they're doing. You need good honing stones to be able to basically perform the whole you know no break in you know get on it you know put it in and go sort of deal and uh, that's why we do these things that's why we invest in the tool so we can double check it because uh, you know even our machinists they're not you know they're human beings people make mistakes uh, sometimes uh, if let's say you're getting a CNC uh, you're getting a CNC honed and board right uh, the CNC machines sometimes have a tendency of like chipping it pretty bad like the actual cutter breaks and you'll get like another thou or two thou of uh, clearance just by doing that and obviously the machine shops check and our machine shops are trusted people that we've worked for with for many years now but if you don't check it and you know the guy doesn't tell you you might have one or two thou of extra clearance in one cylinder and next thing you know the car is smoking and you know leak down and all that stuff so you know uh, these are the reasons why we use a torque plate and follow these uh you know rules that have been established by master machinists for many years uh, this is why we follow them religiously um also this is a four and a half thou motor not because we wanted it to be because this block again came to us built we tore it apart uh, it wasn't torque plated from the previous builder and it was already at about four thou so when we tried to put a torque plate on it it was it was completely off so we had to go a little bit bigger so we usually keep our race motors at four thou uh, we usually build the street motors at three and a half thou actually if you buy pistons from diamond manly and those guys you know they actually have a card that tells you to uh, run them at three and a half thou clearance uh, again if it's torque plated if the cylinder is not distorted three and a half is more than enough clearance 
Uh, on the high horsepower stuff, we run fourth out, like I said. No problems whatsoever, you know, no excessive leak down. Um, no crazy amounts of blow by if it's built right you don't really got to worry about all that stuff but uh yeah i just wanted to show you guys why we do it i mean you guys saw it was about a thousand deviation i'm sure if i go to other cylinders it's, i can find even more deviation but i've already gone ahead and done that i'm not going to do it again i'm not going to hurt your head any more than i already have so hope you guys have a good one and then we'll see you soon until next time guys later